On this particular directional control valve, these rectangle boxes are the positions. So we have one position, two position, and we have one, one, two, three, four, five, five ports. So two position, five port directional control valve. That is where the numbering is. So I have one right there and I label that one. Three is to the right of it and five is to the left of it. And then four is our upper left, port two is our upper right. And I got it labeled here so it's easier to see. So in this resting position, these are coil controlled on each side, 120 volt coils. And on the electrical diagram or the pneumatic diagram here of the directional control valve, you can see these symbols. Sometimes they're spring returned, pilot actuated, whatever, but you have to find out there's so many um, ways you can control it. I don't have all the pictures memorized, but this is coil solenoid controlled with a manual override because it does have the override buttons here. So on the position with the numbers, that's gonna be your normal starting position. So if these coils are not energized, this is how the direction of airflow would move. You would have your main, one is where the main air comes in. Hence, you can see I have my main airline coming from a regulator here. I'm gonna bring in about 20, 20 pounds of pressure into the directional control valve. And right now, with the coils de-energized, air is coming through port one, and then it's gonna enter, exit out port two. So you have air coming out from port two, that is why the cylinder is retracted, because air is entering in this direction, it's pushing up against the piston on this side, and hence our rod is retracted. Now, if we would energize this coil over here, because this coil controls this position over here. This coil controls this position where, where the numbering is. So if we would send uh, 120 volts to this coil, it's gonna pull in our valve spool inside here and change the position to this position. And then now one is gonna go over to four and two, whatever air remains on two is gonna get pushed back out to three and that's where the airs are gonna exhaust out from. So on this second position over here, you don't have the numbering, but the numberings are the same. You know, four is on your upper left corner, two, three, one is in the center and five is to the left. As you can see that port one then shifts over to port four. Nothing is coming out from five. And then port two comes straight down to port three. So then the air is gonna divert this direction. It is now gonna push up against the piston on this side and it's gonna extend out our rod here. And when it extends it out, it's gonna push the air that was on this direction out to port two and exit right out from port three, which is our exhaust. So now I'm gonna send a direct 120 volts to this coil over here. And the coil is energized and move is shifted. So before air was moving from port one to port two, pushing the rod back, now, the spool shifts, port one has air flowing, diverting to port four, and now pushes the piston up against this direction, moves the air on this side of the piston, back and exhaust out, and now our rod is extended out because we have air pressure pushing up against this direction of our piston. And if we would remove power, so I turn off power, we no longer have 120 volts at the coil, the cylinder will not move back into position until you apply power to this coil over here for the valve spool to shift back into number one positioning where the airflow would divert then back to port two to push 
the rod back in. So let's see that. All right, so I got my control wiring shifted back over to here. And now I'm gonna send 120 volts directly to this coil and watch as the cylinder is now gonna retract. There you go. The cylinder has retracted and the only way for it to extend back out is to apply power onto this coil. So there are many different types of directional control valve and cylinders. This one's a double acting. You also have single acting. So um, it's not gonna all work like this. Like I said, you'll have to see how it's controlled. And this is a two position, five port directional control valve. You have three positions and so forth. It's, there's different types. Um, this one doesn't mean that every single one is gonna work this way. So just a quick recap on how to read this. The rectangle here with the arrows inside them are your positions. So we have one, two position, and we have five ports, or sometimes they're called ways, two position, five way. Um, so it's one, two, three, four, five. It's just referring to the ports on the control valve. And the arrows are exactly what they show. You know, air comes into port one, goes out to port two in this position. Air from port four comes out to port five in this position. Nothing happens on port three. And the same goes on to this position. This position over here doesn't have the numbering, but the number remains the same as the numbers on this side. So I hope this gives you a better understanding on how to read the control valve solenoid um, schematic here. Until next time, deuces.